position. Forward hold position. Got four more to go. Work. Forward. Over. Forward. Work. So over. Forward work. Forward hold. That's my 10 throw. I'm going to increase back to my original rows. Okay. So I need to increase. And I'm increasing on the second stitch in. So I'm moving two over. And then I'm going to take my, I use this one because that one doesn't have a real good point on it. So I take the nub that's right below the stitch that I'm adding. Well, almost right below it. Okay, and this gets into the forward hold position. And that did not stitch, so I want to restitch it. And then forward hold, forward work, stitch slow, did I decrease, did I increase on that one? No, I did not. Undo, and why am I undoing? Because I did not increase on that row and I need to. So I move this one out too. Excuse my hand. And I move this one out too. I move these two out one. Excuse me. Sorry about that. And these are getting kind of loopy, so I'm tightening those up a little bit. I'm taking the stitch that's just about below this empty spot. Bringing my carriage over here. Now I'm changing this back to 11 because I undid that row, remember? Okay. So, forward hold position. Increase. Increase. I think if I were to do this again, I would probably do a swatch with a size one key plate. And what I usually do is I'll go on the outside edge and crochet a row of single crochet and I'll have that color match whatever outfit I've done. Okay, so increase. And I'm increasing on the second stitch in. probably take one of those weights out. Yeah. Okay, slip stitch that one. Hold on. I forgot to add, bring this one over. Try not to split the yarn. Okay, and 
rather than put these all back, I'm just putting them into forward work position. Except that one goes in forward hold position. When it doesn't stitch, just restitch it. I want to make me a two prong one of these. That'll give me a two prong, three prong, and four prong. Except when I make the two prong, I'm probably going to use bobbin pins. I have a video up if you want to make one of these. But like I said, you might want to make it out of bobby pins because these carter pins are kind of stiff. And they don't make a point like you can with these. Okay. Forward. And everything else is back. I increased. And knit in a row. These two didn't like to knit, so you manually knit them. Okay, and I'll put that back in work position because you want to increase. Now, as I said earlier, my machine, I have numbers on the bed going from one to however many needles I have. What is that? I split the, I split the yarn somewhere along the line. So I am going to try to redo this one and figure out okay and I'm just restitching it and I'll put it back on the machine put this back up in the machine and restitch it Increase over here. I'm going to tighten those up because those are a little bit too loose before I knit the row and do the increase. There we go. So now that one's been increased. Now I need to increase this one without splitting the yarn. didn't stitch so just go ahead and stitch it push that in work position this didn't stitch so restitch it now if you don't have a two prong tool what you can do quite easily is just use your single prong and move it over Move it over one, move that over one, increase, put this into forward hold position, and knit the row. these two over one I 
a stitch that didn't stitch, so I'm going to fix it when I get over here. Okay. And just stitch it. And move these two over. It'll look kind of like an hourglass. And if you wanted to make one for a real baby, measure, do your swatch, find out how much, how many stitches in an inch, measure the baby's waist, and then take half of that minus a couple stitches. And then you'll knit a band and knit from, and measure from where the, ba the band would rest to the top of the leg. Okay, we want to do a slip. Sometimes when the stitches are tight, it doesn't like to knit, and that's what's been going on there. Okay. Move over two. Somewhere I have a two prong tool made out of bobby pins. I get it out of wood, craft sticks with some glue. This is how this works with this. But I like the handle of the polymer clay one. So as soon as I get some polymer clay, I will make some more. And I probably will video it. Okay. Forward. And there. I have one more stitch to one more row to do, one more increase. And for some reason, this one didn't like to stitch again. So we manually stitch it. two over. But with the polymer clay I bought a I th think it was eight ounces at my local department store. It ran about four dollars. And for four dollars I got one I got two four prong tools, two two prong tools and I got um, one latch tool, and I got some that probably that didn't work out. So I would probably be able to get twice as many of what I got. Okay, now there is. Now I should have my original amount of stitches on here. Okay, so we have two, four, six, eight, ten, two, four, six, twenty, two, four, six, eight, twenty-nine. Okay, I remember doing twenty-nine. I thought I did twenty-six. But that is where I started, so. I don't know why these are stopped stitching. And now I am going to knit the 12 rows. So I am putting my row counter back to zero. And I'm going to knit 12 rows.
when I consistently don't stitch that first stitch, I'll add a weight to it. 